So teachers at religious schools provide a unique service. They teach students not just the you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, math, science, and all that, but they also teach values, and they teach scripture along with those other lessons. So should they be protected by the uh, First Amendment to the Constitution? Um, it's a very important point. I've invited Thomas Jipping on, who's deputy director of the Ed Meese Center for Legal and Judicial Studies and is a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Thomas, it's good to have you back on the program. Thanks for taking the time tonight. Thanks for having me. So what's going on here in this case? We've talked about it a, a couple of nights in a row, but it involves, uh, it, it involves a question of whether or not a school, uh, just, not just a conventional school that teaches reading, writing, and, et cetera, but it's a school that wants to import religious values and religious learning and beliefs and, and, and faith uh, to students, that the school may say, this teacher is not doing a good job or, or is not doing it the way that we believe it should be done under our faith, should that religious institution, the school, have the ability to say, we're going to let you go and hire somebody else? Yeah, people have heard of uh, the separation of church and state, and usually we talk about that in a negative way. The Supreme Court uh, kind of came up with that in the 1940s. Well, this is the good version of the separation of church and state. Here, uh, in, the, in, in these two cases, and the Supreme Court heard arguments in them yesterday, uh, two Catholic schools in California uh, let a teacher, a fifth-grade teacher, go, and in both cases the teachers uh, sued under federal civil rights laws, either the Age Discrimination Act or, or uh, statutes like that. And the issue is whether the First Amendment protects religious schools or churches when they make such personnel decisions from having those federal statutes apply. Because, and and the, the reason is, uh, if, the, if those kinds of statutes apply, well, then you're going to have secular courts uh, determining whether, you know, uh, teachers play a religious role, how much religion they're teaching, whether, you know, which lines ought to be drawn with regard to, to religious doctrine. And we've got to avoid that kind of entanglement. So, you know, when, when, they, when the courts interpret the First Amendment to protect uh, government from religion, that's a misinterpretation. But here we're talking about the First Amendment protecting the church from the state. Uh, and and it, it's called the ministerial exception. It's an exception to uh, the, the application of, of these employment discrimination laws for when churches or religious schools uh, hire and fire ministers or teachers. I mean, for example, uh, Thomas, if if a, a Catholic archdiocese, and by the way, I'm Protestant, I didn't go to a religious school, I don't have kids in religious school, I always tell my audience if I have a dog in the fight, I don't in this case. But I very much support the right of these religious schools to communicate their faith the way they want to. But if any religious institution has somebody who actually has a role in doing that, as you point out in the piece you wrote uh, at Heritage, you say you could be a janitor at the Catholic school, and you could be an atheist janitor, I suppose, if you wanted to, because your job does not involve imparting faith or beliefs or anything like that. But if you're actually teaching faith and beliefs, and if students say, well, do you believe in that stuff? And the teacher says, no, I was just hired to teach this. Well, that's not that's not going to fit the bill, I think. Um, so the Supreme Court is considering these cases this week. And I want to know, you know, why is this a tough issue to decide at all? And why would the state want to get involved and say, we have a right to tell you, you must keep this person on, even though they are not performing the job the way you need it performed. It's not a widgets job. It's not a, you know, just a ones and zeros job. It's a job about faith and belief, isn't it? Well, it, in most cases, it is. I mean, the reason why uh, these employment discrimination laws uh, normally apply is because certain categories of discrimination ought to be against the law. You shouldn't be fired sure. simply because you turned, you know, 52, for example. <laughs> um, but the and and so as a policy, these anti-discrimination laws are fine, and applying them in most cases is fine. But the First Amendment, you know, means that you know churches and religious schools have a different relationship with the government than secular employers do. And that's because of the fundamental right to practice religion. And so they have to be evaluated in a different way. They have different 
legal standards that have to be applied. And again, the concern here is entanglement. How how much freedom should the government have to meddle in the religious decisions of religious institutions? There, there, there really isn't anything more central. To, and I went to a Christian school. My dad was a Christian school teacher. Uh, there, there, there isn't anything more central to, let's say, a, a Christian school than the choice of the teachers that, that help impart that faith. And the, the government should have as little opportunity to meddle and interfere with that as possible. So these are, but, you know, you touched on some of the tough questions that, that uh, you know, apply here. Uh, a religion teacher? Sure, that's an easy case. What about a math teacher who begins a, ca- a class, each class, with prayer? What about, you know, and there's all these different variations, and, and the Supreme Court justices were exploring that, trying to come up with uh, where to draw the line, what should the criteria be. But the basic rule is we want to minimize government meddling in uh, churches and religious schools hiring their teachers. Well, and in fact, it works the other way, too. If somebody showed up for the janitor job uh, and they said, oh, we're not going to hire you, you're Jewish, we don't want a Jew working here, you'd say, well, that's, that's pure religious discrimination against somebody's beliefs. Uh, and, and I would think that you would say the Catholic archdiocese can't refuse to hire, say, a cook for the kitchen or a, or a janitor because they have a different faith than that school does. So they're protected that way. But on the other hand, if you say, I'd like to teach religion, good. Tell us about your faith in God. Oh, I don't actually believe in God. If somebody said that, you said, well, how in the world are you going to teach religion? Well, I'll teach it the way I teach math. Well, the, the, the problem is that I think to teach religion, don't you have to actually believe in what you're teaching? Unlike, say, teaching biology or teaching trigonometry? Well, again, you've touched on a really important distinction because, of course, religion classes are taught in public schools where they teach about religion. This is, but this is something very, very different. This is the actual exercise of religion itself. This is religious freedom itself, the practice of it. And that's what the First Amendment was established to protect, uh, it, it, and it's it's not treated as, as fundamental and as important as it used to be, but it should be. And, and that's what these cases are about. Uh, it, was, it was 2012, so it was eight years ago, the Supreme Court said that, yes, the First Amendment does create an exception here. Uh, but the, you know, the courts, uh, the, the devil's in the details, so to speak, no pun intended. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the court cases that followed, including these, uh, are trying to refine it and trying to apply it. And what are the, what, how, do, how do schools know what they may and may not do? How do? Absolutely. Thomas, I've got a break, but that's Thomas Jipping from the Heritage Foundation, and you're listening to The Lars Larson Show.